Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. Today we are leveling the legendary class Dark Knight to level 200. This was the class used by the first person to ever reach level 200, which was uh, the max level back then in MapleStory Global. And today we're following in their footsteps. However, instead of grinding for I don't know how many years, it will take us a little bit less than a day to reach level 200. Like all old school warriors, we're starting our journey in period. We move out of the slums and start leveling at stumps. I looked through all of my old characters to see if there were like any older pole arms that I could find and I did get my hands on a couple of snowboards, surfboards, a valentine rose and some maple weapons and skis. I was looking for that legendary flag to you know so we look as close as possible to Fangblade but I was quite stumped because I could not find any maple flag anywhere. Those things are apparently pretty rare. Also today we're playing on the Luna server and in this video I will be using my Link skills and Legion effects as well as a ton of EXP cards. <laughs> Skill-wise, Explore Warriors are pretty well equipped to uh, stomp on some stumps. Their Warrior Mastery skill increases their speed, jump and max HP per level and grants 40% knockback resistance. In Forge Job, there is another skill called Stance that grants the remaining 60%, making a total of 100% knockback resistance once you max those two skills. The skill Iron Body increases your HP by 20% and decreases your damage taken by 10%, making us a beefy boy. We also get a double jump and a new skill called Leap Attack. Basically now you can do a superhero landing. If you're in the air, you hold the down key and press the attack key, you'll now do a superhero landing. A very useful skill to cancel your double jump or to save some valuable seconds when training. And of course there is Slash Bash, which hasn't changed at all since like the release of MapleStory. Well, besides the animation, and it no longer costs HP to use, but besides that, it's pretty much the same, right? I think the name is still the same. <laughs> and surprise, surprise, until level 30, we train at Cold Eyes, and some Surgeon Eyes as well. I know this is a bit personal, but I'm like super traumatized whenever I do the second warrior job advancement. Quick story, in MapleStory Europe there was a hardcore server called the Supreme Server where the monsters were extremely strong, like I'm talking extremely strong, like these guys would one shot you. <laughs> and it actually took me several hours to collect 30 marbles and I died so many times. <laughs> Whenever I come back here I just get like war flashbacks and I don't want to be here. Also, I love the level 30 helmet, like my face could not get any straighter and until level 40 we train at Legators. I really wasn't feeling running through another team dungeon, so today we're just grinding around Victoria Island. Spearman's skills are pretty unique as they get a small little friend called the Evil Eye. This dude just won't leave you alone, but thankfully he isn't very talkative. This little fella just heals you for now, but he gets a ton of buffs at later levels. By the way, if you are enjoying this training to 200 video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Make sure to ring the bell notification to stay up to date when new videos go live. We also get the skills Iron Will and Hyper Body. Iron Will increases your defense by 300. Hmm, feel like that needs to get buffed a little bit. I mean, 300 defense is nothing nowadays. But Hyper Body increases your max HP and MP by 60%, which is pretty nice. This used to be a party buff, but party play is illegal, at least according to Nexon or something, I don't know. So it's only a self buff now. No, no party play, no members, no party members, nope. You can just get your own buff, that's it. We also get two new attacks in our second job advancement. Spirit Sweep, which draws monsters in and stuns them. The attack animation is pretty slow though, and it cannot be used in the air. Since you probably still one-shot monsters around this level anyway, it, anyway, it wasn't really one of my favorite skills to use at this point. Their other attack, Piercing Drive though, is pretty nice. It has a short range and gets the job done. And the closer the monsters are to your shaft, the more damage you do, just like in real life. Man, those Legators are making me snore, so let's go train at some boards. <laughs> Even though the Explorer Warrior classes need to get up close and personal, their increased mobility does help a ton in moving around and, you know, defeating monsters. We're leveling pretty fast, actually we're leveling so fast, I hope no one smashes the Hydraulic Brakes because our next training spot is the Copper Sand Brakes. And we stay here until we reach level 60 and complete the third job advancement and become a uh, Dragon uh, uh, Berserker. You know, Explorer Warriors, they're, they're pretty interesting. Their skills aren't too flashy and they have some pretty clear strengths and weaknesses, but it does feel like the Dark Knight is lacking a little bit of an identity. 
Like, you don't play Dark Knights because you love to have a big floating eye next to you that just stares into your soul, uh, judging you. But together with our evil eye, we go to Stairway to the Sky and train there for the next 10 levels. In third job, we get three new attacks. The classic Rush, which will actually be our main source of damage and transportation. And La Mancha Spear, which has us throw our spear around like a maniac and finish him with one big move. Your spear hits in front and behind you, swinging both ways. There's also a new skill called Upward Charge that can be used as is or by auto attacking while holding the up key. Actually, this is a really nice skill that gives Explorer Warriors some upwards mobility that they were definitely lacking before. Berserkers do get a ton of useful buffs in their third job as well. Lord of Darkness increases our critical rate by 30% and critical damage by 8%, plus we also recover 2% of our max HP each attack. Our evil eye will buff us every few seconds, increasing our attack, magic attack and critical rate. The buff is half for party members, but hey, at least party members get something this time. And the buff cross surge, which increases our final damage by 20% and decreases damage taken depending on the amount of HP that we lost. Also our evil eye can now roam freely, attacking monsters on its own. And the skill evil eye shot, which is our fourth attacking skill, is insanely strong, it only has a 12 second cooldown and does a ton of damage in a quite a nice area, it's actually a really nice skill to use. I still use it when training, even at higher levels. I know it's getting a bit of a habit, but warriors just really like to train at Desert Rabbit. Their rush skill is really useful for clearing the map and moving around at the same time. We also train at Sati around level 80, and we can finally wear our Fair Frozen, which makes us look quite sharp, and until level 100, we train at a Blood Harp. I was walking around Lee for a bit trying to figure out if there were like any other maps that might be okay, and dual burgs weren't too bad, but nothing beats a good Zakum run. So we activate a rune and go slap normal Zakum. Since the Awake update, it actually doesn't matter anymore if you have an Eye of Fire in your inventory. You can just waltz in there and the NPC will drop one in your inventory anyway. I didn't have a Hyper Teleport Rock and my rune was still active after that fight with Zakum, so I made a quick stop using the guide menu at Robos in a map called Apparatus Room. It's a small little map where you can really zoom around, bringing doom to the monsters around you. But we didn't stay here for too long. After a quick Star Force accession, we climb down to get to Unbalanced Time. Here the dual ghost pirates are on our hunting list until we reach level 130. Let's go over the new skills a bit while we train. We get two new attacks. One is Dark and Pale, which is our main mobbing skill. This is, there's literally no, there is literally nothing to this skill. It just attacks and does damage. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The other one is called Gungnir's Descent, which does damage to one monster and this skill does more damage depending on your max HP. This skill has a cooldown though, but if you use the buff Sacrifice or one of the effects of Final Pact, the cooldown is ignored. Sacrifice makes you absorb your evil eye like suck it in you and then you recover your HP and increase your boss damage and ignore defense. And you can spam Gungnir's Descent. Final Pact is a passive skill that increases your final damage, movement speed, critical rate and critical damage while your HP is above 20%. This skill's active effect comes into play after dying, you will get revived instantly and will become invincible for a short duration. If you defeat 30 enemies while invincible, the cooldown will shorten from 15 minutes to 10 minutes. You're invincible for 40 seconds though, 40, 40, so that's quite useful when bossing. Your evil eye will now also counterattack every time you get hit, dealing damage and restoring HP. Like, HP restoration seems to be a thing for Dark Knights of Darkness. With all their darkness, you know, you really expect to have some a lot of uh, HP restoration going on there. The evil eye heals them passively every couple of seconds. Every time we get hit, we heal. Every time we do damage, thanks to our third job skill, Lord of Darkness, we heal as well. So you don't need to worry about HP potions ever. We do need some MP potions every now and then though. Next, we're bringing the pain to the banes in the Cave of Thrills in the Elena Deathmine. I was a bit worried because I'm still using work gloves, so level 35 overall, level 30 helmet. But hey, Star Forcing is quite cheap on low level items, so I barely needed any funding to get my Star Force high enough. And we're still doing the damages, so that's pretty nice. At level 140, we also unlock our first hyper skill, Dark Thirst which makes us thirsty for blood. Giving us a boost in weapon attack, you get like 80 weapon attack, which is quite a lot, and we recover 9% of our HP every time we attack. Ah, more healing. By the way, Dark and Pill's range is actually pretty decent. I train both the hero and best class pages to level 200, but Dark Knights are pretty decent at mobbing, at least up until this point. At level 150, we did some boss runs, defeated normal Horntail, which was thanks to our healing, 
pretty easy, and Normal Hilla, which was also a walk in the park. Both of those bosses give a ton of EXP and they're relatively easy to defeat, so make sure to smack them around a bit every day. We make a quick pit stop at Deadly Dressing Tables in the Kerning Mall, but quickly make our way over to Hennessy's to pop some Legion potions to reach level 160. From level 160 on out, things are pretty straightforward. We train at the hideout in Shoah, and at this point I was also using a totem to boost the spawn rates. At level 160 we unlock the next hyper skill, which is a wide range attack. This skill only has a 10 second cooldown, making it easy to pair it with your evil eye shock skill. The monsters here do do a ton of damage, but because we have so much HP and recovery tools available in our kit, training here is pretty easy, you don't have to worry about your HP. This class is pretty chill to train. I was also checking out if dreamy ghosts were still there. And they are, but training in these maps sucks though, so don't go train there. <laughs> the quest line over here is pretty dope though. And after that adventure was over, it's time for some time traveling. We go to Future Period to train at the Swollen Stumps for about 10 levels, and afterwards go to the Forsaken Excavation Site 2 to round things up. Training went pretty fast, and thanks to the consistent EXP buffs that I was using, it took around 7-8 hours to reach level 200. Fifth job, Dark Knights are pretty okay. When I first tried them out some time ago, I didn't really like it all by that much, but they kind of grown on me. Their Spare of Darkness skill is another short cooldown skill where you throw a spare. Spare does a lot of damage. <laughs> like, that's it basically. It has a 100% critical rate and ignores 50% of the monster defense. The skill only has a 10 second cooldown, which syncs pretty nice with your hyper skill Nightshade Explosion. The skill Radiant Evil buffs your evil eye to make it just look really buff, dealing damage in a big area for about 3 seconds. The skill also only has a 20 second cooldown. Pretty nice. The third fifth job skill is Calamitous Cyclone that does damage in a big area. You can steer this skill and move slowly while casting it. And of course this skill also recovers your HP, because why not? Whenever you land a hit, once you release the skill you'll unleash a finisher move dealing additional damage as well. And the newest addition to their fifth job skills is Darkness Aura, which periodically attacks enemies and allows you to absorb life force. For each life force absorbed you recover HP, and if you already have full HP you'll create a shield instead. When Hyper Body is active, every now and then you'll get a full shield, and when Iron Will is active while this skill is active at the same time, you will take less damage from attacks that do percentage HP damage. And that was basically the Dark Knight. What do you think of this class? Let me know in the comments. And that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Terry Kim, Jiju, Galaxy Art, Jesus Rodriguez, Varese, Ricer Ayu, Dries Sumker, Plux, Zenny, Narakumo, Wiley, Ziggy Deer, Kevin Han, Francisco Salsa, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Riley Frank, Milkja, Simak, Safonix, Lonzo, BG Extremes, Caveman, oh yeah, Harry Gardner, Estavo Silva, Ido Haiman, and Anwar NHI. If you would like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, check out the join button below this video. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!